My name is Jocelyn Park and I recently started painting in December of last year, so it's been a little over six months. Every spare moment of my time I'm thinking about what I'm going to be painting next or how to get into this show or um, what techniques I can learn. Um, since December I have been featured in um, numerous galleries. Um, I'm going to be the raw artist, one of the raw artists in July um, for the raw artist premiere, the launch in Orlando, so I'm super excited about that. I was also just recently featured in this magazine. It's called Citywide Arts and Entertainment Space Coast Edition, and they gave me the cover of it, which is an honor in itself. Uh, my painting, Autumn Solitude, is on the cover, and then they also gave me a two-page spread in the middle on page 16 and 17. Uh, my painting, Carmela, is on page 16, and then it gives me uh, an interview on page 17 talking about my trip to Mexico, and it has my painting alone time on there. Um. So I was just at a point in my life where, you know, I kind of felt like, like I should be here, but I wasn't, or something's missing. So I went over to my grandmother's place to go talk with age comes knowledge, and they were knowledgeable about the situation and, and empathetic, and, you know, they understood, they let me cry, they let me, you know, just, just talk it out. And so that very day I was with my grandmother, and we were just going over her paintings, and, um, she showed me one in particular that she did with a palette knife. It was her last one. Uh, she can't paint anymore. She went blind. And um, we were just talking, and I was just, you know, the whole the whole day I just sat there talking and crying and talking and crying. And um, she just showed me a, a painting, and I, I touched it, and um, it's the it's a house, or she still has it. It's a house that she had painted um, that she grew up in. And um, she just told me that, you know, if she could give any of her grandchildren her talent to paint, it would be me. And I thought it was very sweet. Then I went home, um, and the next weekend I, I painted something. So it was pretty cool. I sold it on Facebook, um, like two days later. I was Googling palette knife painters, and I ran across Leonid Aphromov. And something about his artwork was just so bright and romantic that it just made it like it touched me inside. I ended up emailing him in, in English obviously because I speak English and uh, it, there was no response. So then I did more research on him and I found a YouTube video of him talking and he was speaking Russian. So I was like, ah, oh, he speaks Russian. So I had my coworker translate my email and send it off again, this time in Russian. Basically what it said was, um, I really admire your work. I would love to come and train with you because his website said he lived in Boca Raton. I would love to come and train with you. Um, I think, you know, I, I would love to learn your, your technique. My grandmother used the palette knife and I really want to learn how to paint just like her. And um, I got a response. And it was his son Boris and his son wrote me back and said we would love to have you. We're having uh, two back-to-back -back seminars, each being a week. You're welcome to join and he, he had the dates. So I picked a date out and it was from March 19th to the 23rd. I requested leave from work, it got approved, I bought my plane ticket, I bought the resort, or I, I paid for my hotel at the resort, and um, everyone was telling me not to go, everyone. I pretty much prepared for the worst, hoping for the best. I um, made sure my life insurance policy was up to date, the beneficiaries were on there, I made extra copies of my passport and I gave them to my friend, um, just in case. Um, so I get there. And Boris had told me, which was his son, that's who I corresponded with the entire time before the trip, and I even let him know that I was frightened to go, um, that I was traveling alone, that it's just, it's completely new to me, please, you know, reassure me that so I wouldn't cancel, because I was so close to canceling. And um, he wrote me back, and he was like, I, I'll be there, I'll hold up your name, I'll have my wife and my child at, at the airport, just to make sure you're okay. So I get off the plane, I'm walking, and I see a guy holding my name. There's no wife or kid. And I'm like, oh God. So I walk up to him and I was like, hi, you know, I'm Jesse. It's uh, nice to see you. Where's your wife and kid at? <laughs> and he was like, they're in the car. So it was hot. The baby was getting hot. So I'm like, okay, let me just go see if there's a wife and kid in this car. I get in the car, there's a wife and kid in there. So I'm like, okay, cool. I shut the door and like everyone, the movie and Teresa, everything was saying, if you're driving in a car and the car slows down, you need to get out and run. 
And so, lo and behold, we're driving down the highway in Mexico. I have no phone, I have nothing. And the car starts to slow down. And I was just like, oh. So I, gra I grabbed the, the door and I'm like so ready for him to like put chloroform over my mouth or like anything like that. So he's like shifting with the shifter and stuff and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. This never happens. And I'm like, sure, okay. So I'm like, I'm getting ready to run. He pulls over and he stops. My heart is like pounding. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. This is it. I'm going to die. So like, he, he puts it in like D2 or whatever. And then it starts. And then he goes, he's like, I'm so sorry, my transmission. If I had known it was that. So we start going. We're going like 60 again. And that, it was like the, oh, it was just like the best feeling. I'm like, yes, I'm going to live. But every morning I'd wake up at 5, I'd go walk the beach. I'd have breakfast. Um... Boris would pick me up at 9, I'd go to, to the studio, I met Leonid for the first time on Monday, and we'd paint um, one painting in the morning and one painting in the afternoon, and in between I'd go to lunch with Boris and his family, and every day was something different. So a co-worker recently said to me, if it's this easy, it's meant to, it's meant to be. And what she means by that, I guess, is like, ever since I started painting, and I started putting it out there, and and sort of, I guess, just like making it known to the universe or Facebook friends or anyone that I talk to that I want to paint. That's what I want to do. I want to paint. I want to create these things. And I want to, you know, that's what I want to do with my life. It sort of seems like I, I found what I was meant to do somehow. And it everything just clicks. So like, it feels right when I paint. And, and I guess since since I put it out there, people are, are reciprocating in ways and giving me opportunities, letting me show in their galleries, um, offering me this service, you know, video services for this or whatever, um, to, I guess, it, that's like the positive workings of the universe. You, you tell it you want something and you make it happen. And people, the people around you make it happen as well. Uh, I'm a firm believer in um, the secret and paying it forward and, and what you put out in the universe is what you get back. And so I always try to be a positive influence with people around me and I, I just sort of feel like like it's my turn. You know, nothing's really ever been easy for me. Um, I've worked for everything that I've had that I have and um, I kind of feel like this this is this is kind of coming easy to me and I'm always kind of like why? <laughs> what did I do? And, but I'm accepting that more and more, and um, I'm loving every minute of it.